Hi, uh, we meet again. Uh, so this is a continuation of part one of lecture 15. Uh, so in the part one of lecture 15, uh, we have stopped up to this slide uh, in which the slide shows the uh, equations of Bayard Sabat's law uh, for respective uh, current distribution. Uh, we have for the first one is the H field for the case of uh, line current distribution. So this is the equation that can be used to calculate the H field when we are uh, dealing with the line current. And then the second equation is the H field intensity for the case of a surface current density. Yeah, If the source of H field is the surface current. And the third one is the H field intensity if the source of uh, H field is a volume current. Yeah. So now we're going to proceed with the uh, application of Bayard Sabat's law with respect to different type of uh, um, field sources. Yeah. So we start with the case of line current. Uh, basically, in this example, we are going to formulate the equations for the H field intensity due to the line current. Yeah. Uh, so it can be said that if we have a line current like this, yeah, we have a current of I in the direction upward. Yeah, and this is your small element of current DL. Yeah, and when we have a point of B, so B is a point of interest. So it can be said that based on the previous equation that we have seen, the H field at a point of B can be calculated by this equation where we have I DL vector, yeah, which is this component to be exact, yeah. Uh, cross product with the R, yeah, I prefer to use a vector form where we have H field equals to integrations of I DL vector cross the vector of R over 4 pi R power of 3. Yeah, uh, so that should be the alternative form of H field. Yeah, similar to this. Yeah? Okay, so the H field at the point of B can be calculated by using either the equation that we have here or these equations here, yeah? and the integration must be towards the length of your filament current. Yeah, right. So let us formulate the general equations that can be used to 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 find out or to obtain H field intensity produced by a finite length of filament current. For instance, if we have a filament current, uh, which is in this particular line, yeah, uh, having a, a distance from the point of A to the point of B, and the current is having a, an upward direction, yeah, in the Z direction, positive Z direction. So if you want to find the H field at this position, yeah. So we can compare this uh, with the one that we did in, uh, in chapter two last time, when we learned about the Coulomb's law, remember? Where we have applied, um, uh, where we have about the same problems, but that for that particular case, we are having a line charge of finite length. Yeah? Remember that we have the equations of E field is given by 4L over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, R, and then we have sine of alpha 1, sine of alpha 2, direction of R plus cos alpha 1, and minus cos alpha 2, direction of Z. Okay, so that we have this equation for the, for the E field due to the finite length of filament current. So we are about to do the same things here to find the H field produced by this filament uh, current, yeah, finite length from A to B to the point of uh, R phi and Z prime. Yeah? Okay, so uh, there are a few steps that need to be taken, uh, which is, I can say, similar to the step that we have uh, adopted for the case of Coulomb's law last time. Where is the first one? Yeah, the first one is to select the current element. Yeah, so that should be the first step, yeah, is to select the current element. So we have seen that uh, based on this, we are selecting this uh, yellow element here. Yeah, this yellow element, uh, I can see that the element is located at a point of 0, 0, Z. Yeah, so the element is very small, such that we can assume that the element is located at the point of 0, 0, Z. Yeah, and we can, it can be said that this element of current is I, the L vector. And knowing that the current is flowing upwardly, the vector should be now returned to be I D Z of Z prime. So Z hat, yeah, I D Z of Z hat. Yeah, because we are taking that the DL here is equal to DZ direction of Z. Okay, so that should be the first step. Yeah, similar to what we have done in our Coulomb's law last time. So what should be the second one? So second step is to find the DH. Yeah, DH is a small. Uh, amount of magnetic field intensity produced by this element of current. 
Yeah, need to find the DH. That should be the second step. So DH is produced by a single element of current. Yeah, so we can write that the DH based on this. Yeah, the DH can be returned to be um, I DL, or I can say just I DZ Z hat. Yeah, cross product with the vector of R divided by 4 pi r power of 3, where the r vector is the vector directed from the element of current to the point of interest. Yeah, So that should be the direction of vector r. So from here, we can calculate that the vector r can be written as this vector plus this vector, in which a vector of r is equal to r, direction of r, plus z minus z prime, direction of negative z yeah because we know that this magnitude is r yeah this vector is having method of r and the direction of the vector is in a vector of positive r whereas for this vertical vectors which is the directed downward the magnitude is z minus z prime yeah and the unit vector is towards negative z so that's why we have r vector as r direction of r plus z minus z prime direction of negative z. Okay, so that will give us the vector of r. And subsequently, we can write that the r magnitude can be written as r squared plus z minus z prime squared square root. So that should be our r magnitude. So from here, we can obtain uh, the dh uh, vector straight away, Yeah, in which we're going to have that the dh should be equal to, if, if I can write here, it should be equal to i dz z prime or z hat, sorry, cross product with the r vector, which is r squared plus z minus z hat squared. Okay. Uh, sorry, that should be the vector of r. My apologies, my mistake. I suppose not to write this. Sorry for that. Okay. So the vector of R given by this that we have obtained just now, which is R direction of R uh, plus Z minus Z prime direction of negative Z. Okay, and this should be divided by 4 pi R power of 3, which is 4 pi. Yeah, and R power of 3 will be R squared plus Z minus Z prime squared power 3 over 2. Okay, so that should be the DH obtained based on the calculation of DL, based on the calculation of uh, R vector, and based on the, uh, 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 um, the R magnitude. Yeah? So once we have this DH, what you have to do then, so you have to integrate, yeah? you have to integrate for the filament current, yeah? we, have, we have that the H vector should be based on the integration of the DH, which will be the integration for the length from the point of A to the point of B. So that should be the step number three, which is the integration for the previous DH in step two to enable us to find the actual H field intensity. Yeah. Okay then, so that should be the three, three steps that need to be taken, which is similar to the Coulomb's law last time. Number one, have to select the current element. Number two, calculate the DH. Number three, uh, obtain the total H by integrating the DH. Yeah. Okay, so based on this, um, uh, these are the, 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 the flow of the calculation. So we have done up to this step just now. Uh, up to this step, uh, if I can recall back, uh, let me see. Yeah, let me see. We have this particular case, yeah. So uh, we have to cross product. Yeah, we have to cross product. Uh, if I can do it now, uh, we're going to have for this particular case, that should be I, DZ, direction of Z, cross. So that will give us R direction of R uh, plus Z minus Z prime direction of negative Z divided by 4 pi, okay, 4 pi R squared plus Z minus Z prime squared power of 3 over 2. Okay, so this is a cross product. So based on this, Z cross R, yeah? so Z cross R will give us phi, yeah, Z cross, cross R will give us phi. Well, Z cross negative Z will give us zero, yeah? Because Z cross negative Z will give us zero. That is why when we do the cross product between I, D, Z, direction of Z, and the vector of R here, we're going to have these terms only. Whereby Z cross R will give us phi, D, Z 
uh, and r is a multiplication, so we're going to have r of dz, and the rest will follow. So that should be the dh obtained based on that cross product between the dl vector and the r vector. Yeah, z cross negative z is zero. Yeah, so for this, this cross product, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I don't have to review it again because you have learned this in that lecture number one. Yeah, so again, my advice if you got confused with the cross product of the vectors, please refer back to the lecture number one. Okay, then uh, by this, you're going to proceed with the integration. So this is step number two. We have produced the dh uh, vectors, and afterwards, we need to do the integration to find the h field. Yeah, so for the h field, yeah, uh, it can be proved. Yeah, it can be proved because. Uh, you are going to get that the h field is the integrations for the i r dz direction of phi divided by 4 pi r squared plus z minus z prime power of 2 to the power of 3 over 2. So for this, because we are integrating towards the dz, that's why we are using this identity. Yeah. So by right, you are going to get <coughs> integrations. Um, so I, I'm taking out the, uh, the, the constants here. So I is taken out, R is also taken out, and 4 pi is also taken out. So we're going to have integrations of uh, this. Yeah, we're going to have integrations of uh, dz yeah, over R squared plus z minus z prime, uh, power to 3 over 2. Yeah, 3 over 2 and in the direction of phi. Okay, so uh, we can compare this integration with the one that we're having here, in which we, if we can compare, we can to say that uh, c is equals to r basically, and x is in the z minus z prime. So for this, when we do the integration, and remember that the integration is, is towards the length of your filament, so which is from a to the point of b. Yeah, so when we do the integration, we're going to get i r over 4 pi, okay, and that will give us uh, uh, z minus z prime, yeah, divided by r squared plus z minus z prime squared power of half. And that should be the integration from a to b. So you have then, you have to then substitute the value of a and b into the z variable yeah? because z prime is a constant remember z prime is a point here so z prime is a constant but z is a variable so you have to substitute the value of a and b into the z so when we're done with the substitution that is why you are getting this equation yeah so this is the equation that shall be obtained yeah uh, if we yeah once we have done with the uh, substitution of all of these integrations. Sorry, I, I missed something here. I, sh I should have r squared outside here. Yeah, yeah that should be the, the, the for the, uh, the bracket. So r squared is inside here. The r squared multiplied with r squared plus z minus z prime squared power of half. Yeah, I forgot, I, I missed this r squared, which is supposed to be multiplied with the bracket there. Yeah, so sorry for my mistake there. So I repeat again based on this uh, substitution of a and b. We're going to get this equation for the heat field intensity, yeah, which is in the direction of phi, yeah. Okay, uh, and again, it is similar to what we have done uh, earlier for the case of Coulomb's law, in which if we can base on this uh, diagram again, the basic diagram again, uh, we are connecting the end of the filament, yeah, uh, to the uh, point of interest here. Yeah, the end of the minute is here. Okay, remember R is what? R is a radial distance. Yeah, so we can have that. That should be our angle. Let's say we write this as uh, um, alpha 1. Sorry, that should be alpha 1. And that should be my alpha 2. So alpha 1 is the angle bounded between the end of your uh, filament with the radial distance or perpendicular distance. Whereas uh, alpha 2 also is the angle which is made between the end of the filament with the perpendicular distance. Yeah, So that should be the alpha 1 and alpha 2. Okay, I think this is the same mistake that we did in our test 1 last time. Yeah? So in which alpha, the angle must be measured between the end of the filament with these perpendicular lines. 
that should be where the alpha uh, shall be measured. Yeah. Okay. So based on this, we can see that uh, knowing that uh, this length over here, yeah, is equals to b minus z prime, and the length over here is equals to z prime minus a. Okay, and this hypotenuse is equals to r squared plus b minus z prime squared square root. And this hypotenuse here is r squared plus uh, z prime, sorry, should be z prime. Yeah, uh, z prime minus a squared uh, square root. That should be our hypotenuse length, yeah? So based on this, we can write that the sine of alpha 1 shall be equals to b minus z prime over r squared plus b minus z prime squared, okay, uh, square root, okay, and the same things apply for the sine of alpha 2, if we can have based on this diagram, we're going to have sine of alpha 2 will be equals to z prime minus a divided by r squared plus z prime minus a squared square root. Okay. Uh, the same things apply for the cos of alpha 1 and the cos of alpha 2, which is uh, equals to r over the hypotenuse for respective uh, angle of alpha 1 and alpha, alpha 2. Okay. So based on that, when we, uh, we understand that the alpha 1, the angle of alpha 1 and alpha 2 is based on this calculation. So based on that, we can write that what we're having here Okay, should be equals to the sine of alpha 1 and what we're having here should be equals to uh, the, 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 the cos, sorry, the sine of alpha 2. Okay, so that's why if you proceed with this uh, calculation, we're going to have that the, the, the H field shall be calculated based on this equation where I will 4 pi R sine of alpha 1 plus sine alpha 2 direction of phi. Okay, right. So, you can see that this is similar to what we have learned previously for the case of uh, filament, sorry, for the case of line charge of finite length, remember? Yeah, but uh, we have reduced terms now. We only have sine term as compared to the line charge before where we have a cosine terms also. Yeah. So that should be the equation that can be used to calculate the H field intensity when we are dealing with the finite length of the filament current as shown in the diagram here. Yeah, this is your filament current. The I, for instance, uh, so three things need to be need to be obtained if you want to find the H field produced by this filament current. The first one is the radial distance of R. Yeah, R should be applied here. Then you need to find out what should be the sine of alpha one and what should be the sine of alpha two. So if you have these three important things, three important parameters, you can use it to find the H field intensity produced by a finite length of filament current. Yeah. Okay, so the same thing is applied. If let's say we assume that the length of this filament current is extended to infinite. So this length is now extended to infinite and this length is also in, extended to infinite. And as such, we can say that the alpha one will then approaching 90 degrees, alpha two will also approaching 90 degrees. So as such, when we substitute this information in the equation here, we can then simplify that the equation of the H field due to infinite length of filament current shall be equals to i over 2 pi r the ration of phi because sine 90 is 1 sine 2 is also 1 so we can simplify it to be just this term this is for the case of infinite length of filament current okay all right so i'm going to stop here